Hello everyone, Raza here. In this video, we will learn how to apply multiple filters on table data in Power Apps. We will leverage the modern table control, connect it to a SharePoint list, and build multiple filter containers, which the user can leverage to refine the data in the table control. All of this keeping responsive design principles in mind. So let's check it out in action. The screen allows us to filter data in the modern table control based upon the multiple filter criteria provided in the filter panels. Show me all the items that are high priority. Show me the high priority items where the title begins with the text, slow. All of this is fully responsive in nature. As the device size and orientation changes, you can see how all the controls realign, reposition themselves, including the filter panel on the top. Let's build this experience from scratch. I will be connecting my table control to a data source, which in this scenario is a SharePoint list that has multiple types of columns. Since I will be leveraging modern controls and responsive design, make sure that under app settings, display, scale to fit is turned off. That enables the app to leverage the available space on the screen. And under updates, make sure that modern controls and themes are turned on. My SharePoint list is already connected to my Power App. Now let's go ahead and create a new screen. This screen we will build from one of the new screen templates called header and table. The screen is built with responsive container controls. In the main container, we have the modern table control, which we can directly connect to my issue tracking SharePoint list. If I preview the app, this table control will showcase the data from my SharePoint list. And the screen is fully responsive. No matter which device or orientation I view this on, you can see how the header and the table control repositions itself depending upon the real estate available on the screen. Now let's add a container in which we will add the filters for the table control. I'll pick the main screen container and go and insert a horizontal container. This container I will rename to filter container, right click, reorder, move it up so it sits above the table control. For the filter container, flexible height property I will turn off and give it a defined height 50. Drop shadow effect, I'll turn off. So I have this filter container ready in which I would like to place my filters. Now for each filter, I will add a separate container. In my filter container, I'll click plus and add a horizontal container. This new container that got added Flexible width, I'll turn off. I'll give it a defined width 300. Minimum height, I'll set it as 50, which is the same as the parent, which is filter container. Drop shadow effect, I'll give it semi light. And I would like to fill this container with a background color, which is very similar to the theme of my Power App. The container has a fill property. This I will set as app 
dot theme dot colors dot I will pick one of the lighter shades of my theme color. I'll pick lighter 60. Notice as I change the theme of my power app, that color also changes. So I'll select the container that I added in filter container. In this, I'll go and insert the modern text control. I'll select the container again and go and insert the modern text input control. I would like to align both these controls in the center. So I'll select my container in which these controls are placed. Vertical alignment center. Now this container, I'll rename it title filter. The text controls text property, I'll set to title. The text input control. Firstly, I'll reduce the width. I'll set it to 180. This allows for placeholder text. This is a great way to hint the user as to what they could potentially do with this filter. You can also add emojis here. Windows plus dot key will open the emoji keyboard. I'll pick the search icon and I will say starts with text. Meaning whatever the user types here, it will check to see if the title starts with this text. This control, I'll rename to TXT title. Table control, items property is my connected SharePoint list, which is issue tracking list. To apply a filter, we'll use the filter function. Filter my SharePoint list, where I'll use the formula starts with which column, the title column, starts with the text that's entered in that text box, which I called txt title dot value will give me the text that's entered there. Preview the app. Let me search for login. If I click out, notice then it performed the search. Meaning, even though I make changes until I focus out of the control, it won't apply the filter. Text feature. Once I focus out, it will give me the results. Modern text input control has a property called trigger output. Currently it's focus out. Key press, every keystroke, it will provide the output value, which also means that your table control will keep filtering the data on every keystroke, which is a very expensive operation. What I would recommend is to use the option delayed. Here, when I make a change and just wait for a moment, it would go ahead and apply that output of that text input control to the table controls filter condition. Notice I typed, I waited, delayed output gives me the results. Next, I'll add a filter option for the status column. Status in my SharePoint list is a choice column that has the following values. To create a filter experience with the similar design and style, instead of recreating it again and again, I'll pick this title filter and copy. Select my main filter, right click, paste. So notice it added another filter container. This one I will rename to status filter. The text here will be status. It's a choice column, so I'll delete this. And in the status filter, I'll go and insert the modern drop down control. I'll rename this to DRP status. The width I'll set to 180 so it fits in the space. 
items property of this drop down control i'll use the formula choices of my data source which is issue tracking list dot the name of my column which is status so this will list out all the choice options from that choice column notice these filters are very close to each other so what i can do is for the main filter container i'll add a gap of let's say 10 next step we need to add this status drop down selected value as a filter criteria on my table control table control items property i'll format the text currently there is a single filter criteria here now i need to add a second criteria and i want both the filters to apply together in an and condition so first step i'll write and that's a function i'll put a comma and then i will add my second condition which would be my status column which is of type choice so status dot value is equal to my drop down control dot selected dot value i'll close the and function so now it will apply a combination of both those filters there is no data displayed well that's because it's applying the status filter right now and status is empty so how do i handle an empty selection well for that we'll add an or condition and the first condition of or will be that status drop down controls selected value is this equal to blank and the second condition of or would be the filter itself i can see all the data from my sharepoint list now if i start picking a specific status it will start filtering the data based upon that selected status and these filters will work in combination title starting with ui and status being open reset my filters let's give the user an easy option to do that in the main filter container i'll go and insert the modern button control i'll use an icon here arrow reset and the layout of this button i'll pick icon only on select of this button reset my title text control and then reset my drop down status control reset the table shows all the data select filters apply multiple filter conditions here are the results so let's give a visual indicator to the user that a filter is applied in the table control each field that you've added for example status in my case has a property called header text this i will set as follows if my status filter drop down dot selected dot value is equal to blank meaning there is no filter for status i'll put the header text as status else i'll use an emoji here to show the text status notice there is a filter applied for status so it highlights it with that emoji we can do the same thing with the title field header text if is blank txt title dot value then you show title else you show title with that emoji i'll remove the title filter see that indicator goes away i'll reset all the indicators go away
priority is also a choice column in my case. Assign to is a person type column. The drop down items property, I'll hard coded and give it two options all and me. Default selected items, I'll say all. So by default, it picks all. Table filter, one more condition I need, comma, or DRP assigned to dot selected dot value is it equal to all. Assigned to column, which is of type person, get me the email address of that person and compare it with the current logged in user's email address. Simple formula. Header text for assigned to field in the table. I'm going to set it as follows. Show me all the items assigned to me that are high priority. For the table controls items property, for starts with, I'll also recommend adding an or condition here to check to see if the title text input control is blank. So this will be in an or condition which starts with. This is to ensure that when you play the app, the table control loads all the data to begin with. And here is an example of the app that I'm playing directly in my browser experience. If I view this on a tablet experience, notice that the filters start cutting off. You can see that the filter section is not responsive. And the reason is because the filter container has a hard coded height of 50. Wrap property is turned off. I'll go and turn this on and preview my app. So notice on a tablet device, it's only showing the controls depending upon how much height it has, but it is wrapping the controls. Now it shows two, now it shows one. We need to dynamically change the height of my filter container. Depending upon the size of my screen, screen size property lets us know which device size is the user running the app on. So the height property, I'll change this. I'll use the function switch to switch on my screen's size property. If the screen size is small, meaning mobile device held vertically, in that case, I would like to give it more height so it can fit all those controls. In my case, I have like four filter conditions, each of which have a height of 50. So if I do four into 50, just for now, I'll put the number 200. In all other conditions, I'll just keep the height as 50. I need more height. So let's do that instead of 200, four multiplied by 70. Now, I can see all my filters. Screen size two is mobile device held horizontally or tablet device held vertically. So if the screen size is medium, that's screen size two, number of filters, which in my case is four, multiplied by 30. If screen size is large, I'll do four into 30 for now. And then the last option, which is white screen, 50 was enough. So now you can see in different device sizes and orientations, my filters are aligning perfectly. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.